All right. Thanks, everyone, and thanks for coming. Um, and I'm very delighted to be here to share with you uh, our work on uh, how we're pioneering efficient hyperscale ray NPU cluster. Um, just for the sake of uh, everyone, basically, the NPU is, uh, in, uh, is a product from Huawei, uh, which we call Essen, the, the product name we call Essen NPU. Uh, the performance is slightly kind of uh, about the same, like uh, A100, right? And so this is a work in conjunction with our, my team in China as well as our team in Canada. So uh, my name is Kenneth and uh, with me is uh, Bo Yuan. Uh, so I myself is a, a chief system architect from Huawei and specialize in heterogeneous computing. So it was about a, two years ago when we st start thinking about like uh, how we build, uh, need to build the hyperscale cluster. The first thing that we think is that what plugging model that fits those kind of cluster, right? So we have a few things in my, our head is that we would like to have uh, this cluster to be able to handle uh, conventional workload as well as AI workload, as well as a type of workload which we call converged workload, which is AI plus X, the kind of workload, right? So, and we come across Ray and we, we think that Ray actually is one of the very um, perfect solution of what we need. Um, for a few reasons, for example, like uh, we're looking into Ray and then it can do things like uh, these uh, deferred executions and it's very flexible and it's uh, uh, very agile. And so we, we think that this is a perfect solution for what we need. Uh, but the problem is that at the time when we look into Ray, it, uh, mostly Ray only support GPU, right? So then um, the very first thing that come into our mind is that, hey, we need to integrate um, third-party solutions, that non-GPU solutions into Ray. Um, so then that's what you can see in the boxes on the, on the, on the top, top left, which is uh, color in red. So that's basically uh, Huawei solutions that we have uh, basically on top, which is a plugging model uh, equivalent to PyTorch called MySpore. And underneath, we have a runtime called CAN, which is equivalent to CUDA. Right? So our team basically go through a lot of um, uh, troubles uh, integrating these uh, solutions because, for example, like uh, in CAN, uh, the topology used in CAN and the GPU CUDA is very different. So when it presents to Ray, uh, what it means to the developer is that you, know, you cannot use the same concept that you understand GPU to configure your Ray cluster for, 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 for the NPU. So um, we, thank, thankfully, you know, our team basically solved all these problems. So right now, basically, we mix the way that you use uh, our solutions uh, on, on Ray will be very similar to like, uh, how you use it on the GPU. So um, as we integrate through this whole thing, the magic actually happens, right? So we started to, to see that we're able to schedule the workload uh, for that you have developed in PyTorch. Now you can either select to run on NPU cluster or GPU cluster or run on both at the same time. So magic happened, right? So, um, and also, like uh, this is about back like uh, six months ago. So we start to think that, hey, we need to contribute what we do here back to the open source community. That's why in the last six months, uh, we have been basically engaging with this uh, Ray open source community. And up to this point, thankfully, we already have uh, submitted about like uh, 20 uh, the pull requests to the, to, to the repository. So everything that you see right here, almost all of them, right, 99% of them are available in the source code, in the, in, in the open source, uh, source code of Ray. So um, yeah, so the, the very first customer that we encounter is our internal customer that um, they basically, what they did with this uh, system is that they wanted to uh, do an offline batch uh, uh, inference uh, uh, workload on the thousands of uh, these uh, MPU and GPUs. And this system is running 24 seven and then they are processing like 100 terabytes of data daily uh, and uh, the workload is scheduled like uh, every like uh, minutes, a uh, few minutes. And the, the original design uh, architecture of this, of this uh, system is that they basically have uh, this Argo um, on uh, different kind of uh, cluster. So they have two types of cluster. One is a CPU cluster, the other one is a GPU cluster. So each of them basically have uh, this uh, Argo running the jobs inside, managing the jobs inside, and the scheduling is firing off from Airflow to Argo cluster. As you can see, the, 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 the system like this means that each of the cluster have uh, its own isolated workload. So the workload doesn't share across uh, you know, different type of a cluster. So the utilization, the resource utilization, efficiency is kind of uh, limited right, in, in this kind of setup. Right. And um, the other thing is that this team, they're also thinking that, hey, they want to expand because um, 
100 terabyte was something that about uh, a year ago. So their, their, their amount of data they are processing is increasing um, you know, uh, 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 exponentially. So then they need to increase their cluster size and with such kind of efficiency cluster setup, they cannot scale. So, and therefore, they um, would like to also uh, to migrate some of their workload from originally from uh, GPU to NPU, right? So they, they, were, uh, they, they are in, in the, uh, you know, um, dealing with us and how they can actually do that so they can basically, um, uh, without interrupting their business, they can do their migration and increase the efficiency. And therefore, they started, when they started to use our solution on, on, on uh, using Ray, now the, the workflow I'm sorry about the, 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 the dotted lines, the red dotted lines here. This is supposed to be uh, connected, okay? So uh, now the workflow is connected, right? So we basically using Ray to manage both CPU cluster and, and uh, uh, the NPU cluster. Everything will be managed by Ray. So the job is still firing off from the uh, airflow. But then, you know, the, uh, the Ray basically, you know, thankfully we also have this Ray data where we can now do the uh, data pipelining uh, across uh, different clusters. So then we can basically hide a lot of uh, transfer latency and so on. And what does that bring us, right? So, oh, before I forgot, um, beca uh, because we enabled both GPU and N NPU uh, with these uh, solutions, so the customer, um, the workload that they run on the NPU are not like uh, this uh, huge influencing uh, kind of uh, model. They basically have a lot of small models. There's also add into like a complexity in managing the small model, which Boyan later on going to share with us actually how we do this uh, small model management. And also with this small model, they do not want to migrate all their models at, 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 at the same time. They wanted to migrate part of their model and slowly, you know, so therefore the system will have a NPU and GPU coexist at the same time. And, and we have already enabled them to, uh, of doing so. Uh, with our solution, and this is the out outcome, right? So we the the improvement, the the utilizations, um, system utilization improved by four times, and throughput improved by two point five x, right? Um, so and with this, uh, we although we have uh, you know uh, achieved um, kind of a very significant kind of improvement, which is out of our expectation, honestly. And basically, oh, before I forget as well. So the four times and two for pi times is a very conservative number. It's an end-to-end -end number, right? In some cases, we see this number go like very crazy, like a 20x, 40x, whatever you call it. And, but we are not going to stop here. We, are, we would like to expand this cluster to support more NPU. Um, so then we are going to face a, a lot of problems, again, like uh, stability and scalability, as you all know. Ray actually based on GCS, right? This is a single point of failure. So how we basically able to scale is really depending on how we basically deal with this uh, limitation of GCS and also how we maintain good utilization and performance on the larger scale of, an, of uh, this uh, NPU cluster. And, and, and most importantly, when the cluster increase, we would like to have multiple users to use this cluster and not just one type of user. So how all the users are able to use this cluster together and then they can able to share the resource effect effectively will be uh, one of our challenges and, and, and more is a usability. So I will let that uh, Boyan to introduce the rest. Um, thanks, Kenneth, for the great introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Boyan Chen. I'm, I'm a researcher from Huawei Canada. So uh, in the next, uh, I'm going to walk you through with some of the main challenges we're trying to tackle when we really want to scale the whole cluster to thousands of nodes and uh, 10K uh, NPUs. So we'll go through these three directions one by one. Um, the first direction is, of course, towards a more stable cluster. So um, some of you might not know, but when the scale goes really large, many things can go wrong. So what we commonly experience are four things, uh, not to list all of them. The first one is unexpected pod restart on the uh, Kubernetes and Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster. And the second one is the dashboard request uh, being timed out because of too many numbers of jobs being submitted. And number three is the same kind of consequences where we have unresponsive uh, job requests because of the um, uh, push on the dashboard head. And the last point is that we observe, sometimes we observe very high network I.O. so that the nodes cannot be health checked so that it does not respond to GCS and consider it to be a dead. Um, so how do we do this? Um, we 
did a lot of monitoring and testing kind of software engineering efforts to repeatedly test the cluster into some uh, stress setting setting. And we want to monitor every read process about their CPU time, memory, network, which I will go through later on. Um, but essentially, I'll give you a hint of what are the uh, parts that we have been working on. One of the graph you will see in the bottom left is the G, uh, Redis uh, performance uh, optimization, uh, per, uh, performance profiling figure. So one thing we observe is that when we have um, thousands of jobs submitting to one uh, read cluster, we will see that the Redis record number could go even millions. And at that time, go through traversing the Redis uh, uh, for the uh, GCS could uh, lead to a very long time. And that's because it basically goes through every table of the Redis to get the uh, table th they actually want. So what we do is we basically try to have a Redis cache to improve the query performance and open a PR later on resulting the total redesign of the how Redis table was uh, looked up uh, in the open source. So now it's uh, available to everybody. And the other things um, due to time constraint, I won't go I mean, detail of every uh, aspect, but we're basically trying to reduce the GCS pressure, as Ken has just mentioned. So the GCS will talk to the drivers, the GCS will talk to the dashboard agent, and all of the things that um, the key is to basically reduce the GCS communications through the, uh, through the information uh, have been passed through different components. Um, the PR number is here, and feel free to check it out if you're interested. The next aspect is how we achieve high utilization of a cluster. So one common question I get from my boss is like, okay, I give you all these MPUs and GPUs, how come these utilization are so low, right? So um, we tackle this problem from three levels, which are cluster level, job level, and task level. So at cluster level, we realize that uh, Ray, open source Ray doesn't really have a cluster level a job, a job queue management kind of thing. So we developed something called a cluster and job dispatcher, uh, where you can actually do hot updates of the RAID clusters. You can create, read, update, delete, and uh, all these clusters won't give you a feeling for the users that you know, some of your works are, 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 are done. So when we sunset a particular cluster like A1, uh, ver uh, version one uh, shows here, we will basically stop, stop sending new job requests to the cluster and start to send the job to request to a new, newly initialized cluster and the old cluster will be auto scaled down so that a new cluster can take the resources. And we're currently wor uh, working in progress is that we want to develop some more advanced uh, auto scaling pr priority policies for this to uh, boost the utilization of a uh, cluster overall. At a job level, uh, one thing we observe is uh, very interesting is that it's very hard or it, it, it requires a lot of trial and error efforts to actually decide the best configuration of a particular job running on the rig cluster. So for example, here, the upper one, uh, the code snippet requires you know, the number of devices which uh, give you the um, uh, configuration of how much um, model or actor needs for the MPU, and the concurrency number, and the batch size, and other parameters. Um, but what we observed in real setting is that the post-process actors here are mostly idle, which means that the previous tasks are kind of um, they're, they're, they're short of resources. So we have to tune the resources um, so that the overall pipeline looks uh, fluent without bubbles, that no resources are basically have starvations. Uh, what we do end up with is like we spend quite a lot of time trying to tune these heuristic numbers um, and uh, what we f end up with is you know, reduce the batch size and reduce the, num uh, reduce the memory needs, but at the it turns out you can fit more models into the, into the MPU so that uh, the performance actually improved. So we guess around 30% uh, improvement on MPU utilization and 25% improvement on throughput, but again, this is really case by case. So we were trying to develop something more general so that you can auto-tune the uh, job configuration so that you can, you, developers don't need to worry about these configurations, right? Um, the last part is uh, down to the rate core level. So although RAID data has a lot of fancy um, you know, back pressure control, but one thing they didn't do well when they submit the task to a RAID core is that we actually find quite a lot of high memory pressure and low uh, MPU utilization. So I would like to uh, have a quote here for, from some guy who worked at uh, VRM. He said, you know, if anything, 
when you try to say the performance bottleneck of VLM is actually caused by CPU overhead, which is exactly the case here. So the, the upper lay, upper one you sh you see is actually the default recore scheduling policy, where it still follows a FIFO kind of uh, um, uh, a pattern to give you uh, execute CPU tasks first and NPU tasks later. This way it will result a lot of intermediate data stored in the object store, sometimes even spill to the disk. So it will have very high memory pressures as well as uh, lower down. The NPUs are basically waiting for the jobs. So we have developed some uh, scheduling technique called fair dispatching. So this PR is basically trying to solve this issue and reduce the memory pressure uh, and improve the performance. And now it's basically the default recore scheduling policy so everybody can use it. And it's not just about uh, NPU, it's also about GPUs. Um, so the last thing is uh, a shared, uh, easy to use cluster where we try to improve the usability of the cluster. Um, the original RAID dashboard as it is, we think is more like a cluster level dashboard where you can only see the cluster level information. But in fact, in, in, in production settings, you will actually have a lot of jobs. Like I mentioned before, you could have inference, fine tuning, data processing, even training, all happening on the same RAID cluster because you want to fully utilize your, all, your, all of your resources, right? But it, then it's really hard for you to tune, look at each job's uh, you know, performance, uh, how good it performs, or what are the issues in there. So what we really want to do is a um, job level RAID dashboard where you actually can, for, for each job, you can actually, uh, actually look at what the job's topology is and how is the pipeline of the job, how much resources it takes. So on the, on the, on the right of the image, uh, we, can, uh, we show uh, basically a pipeline of the, uh, one of the array data job running on this, uh, uh, running on uh, one of the array cluster. And you could see, you know, we have the profiler, we have the NPU usage, that we actually have logical usage and uh, the physical usage compared side by side so that you know whether your logical usage and the pro uh, physical usage actually match, right? And we even have disk I.O. and also network I.O. because this is exactly the problem we, we encounter is that we later on realize the network I.O. actually represents a lot of data, unnecessary data movement. So moving forward, what we want to do is to extract auto topology from the RAID task, uh, RAID job, and we want to have fine-grained uh, XPU resource analysis, we want to have I.O. analysis, and combining all these kind of information, uh, hopefully we can give developers more insight of how to use your array cluster better. Okay? So um, finally, the key takeaways of this uh, talk and our future plans. So the takeaway, you can say, Ray is really awesome. Open source Ray is awesome. But to enable Ray for hyperscale clusters requires huge uh, software engineering efforts. Right? A cluster needs to be very stable, uh, scalable to long running jobs. A cluster needs to be very efficient at a cluster job or task level. And users, developers, need to actually use these clusters wisely, right? Um, our future plans will continue working on the Ascend MPU capabilities for sure. And actually, we are currently actually working on the compiled graphs. Uh, actually, we started like a few months ago with the Anyscale team uh, for these uh, topology-aware data-oriented organizations. Um, I remember somebody uh, asked uh, today for the compile graph, so whether this will work for other options other than uh, uh, GPUs. So stay tuned for, for the changes we uh, contributed to the open source. Um, at the end, we have some engineering uh, improvements, such as cluster job management with multi-tenancy, scalability developer testing to, sh to, to basically say this cluster is good for uh, uh, you know, 2K nodes, 4K nodes, or 8K nodes. Um, finally, uh, a shameless uh, ad that uh, where we're hiring, uh, both in Canada and China, and uh, if you're interested, please contact uh, Kenneth or me. And in addition, we're actually hosting a local Ray workshop on October 19th in Shanghai in China. And here is our QR code. You can scan and see our um, you know, uh, invited experts to talk about how they use Ray clusters from uh, companies like Bandance, Alibaba, and uh, uh, Little Red Book. Yeah, that would be all. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we, we can discuss offline if we have questions. So, 